On this episode of Travels with Bill, we're in Child's Lake in the Duck Mountain Provincial Park in Manitoba to explore this amazing lake and show you why you should consider camping here, well, at least visiting. Before the video is done, we're going to tell you the epic story of boy versus fish. Check out these fish. Well, they're interested in something. You may be able to guess what. We'll tell you that story towards the end of the video, but he's going to keep working on this the entire time we're showing you the video and see if he can catch one of those fish that you can see in the screen there. Well, here's a look at the main beach of Child's Lake. It's a big beach and it's a beautiful lake. Now, this video we filmed both in the summertime and some in the fall, so you'll see the trees change a little bit here as we move from season to season. But check it out, little playground there going by, nice beach, some trees too. The Duck Mountain Park, of course, is known for a lot of trees. It's not like those southern parks where there's maybe one or two trees in the entire thing. No, no, this is a forest with a campground carved out of it, so it's kind of cool to see. Let's take a peek at what exactly you see when you're walking through here. This is the day use camping area. So with your park pass, you can come here and use these campsites as much as you want, really, because first come, first serve on these, but it's not overnight camping. This is just a place you come camp for the day, enjoy the beach, maybe make some hot dogs, and then go home at the end of it. But that's actually quite a lot of fun if you come and do that. We've done it a few times wonderful time. They've also got one of those group sort of cook shack things. You can see it up in the distance there. We'll get to it here in a minute. Each of the campsites has a little fire pit in it so you can make your fire there. Now for the most part you can always make a fire here. There have been a couple times in the last year where there's been fire restrictions because it's so dry but you'll see signs for that if it happens to be. Of course you can also check the Manitoba Parks website for more details on that. As long as there aren't fire restrictions though, hey bring some firewood and make a fire. You can also buy firewood at at Child's Lake Lodge, which is located right beside us here in this day use camping area. So in here, of course, you can make food for a family, I suppose. A little cooktop on there. Now you may want to bring a pot or pan to put on there too, but you can make a fire. A little picnic to keep you going and a beautiful view, isn't it? Look at that. You can see all the way around. Ah, such a nice place, this lake. Child's Lake Lodge was founded by a guy that unfortunately isn't with us anymore, but I bet his spirit's here looking around. He's got a nice little plaque here, his family place, the founder of Child's Lake Lodge. The plaque is actually part of this little bench, so you can sit on the bench and look out at the lake just like he loved to do when he was here wandering around. Oh, isn't it nice? Well, here's a little aerial view. So you can see the beach there. There's the playground, quite a nice playground. There's actually two at Child's Lake. There's this one at the main beach. There's another one in the overnight camping area. It's maybe not quite as big, but it's quite nice too. Uh, you can certainly go over there during the day. You don't have to be overnight camping. You can drive in and use that playground. So either one works. There's actually two beaches here too. There's the main one we just looked at. Then across the lake, there's another one over by the campground boat launch that's used a lot by campers but again there is some parking spots there so if you wanted to you could run over we're flying over child's lake lodge here it's a lodge outfitter type thing they've got quite a few cabins and such going on you see some people come and stay here for the weekend in the cabins or hey maybe they stay for the whole week check out the water here see how we're seeing into it even at this angle that's how clear the water is much like the blue lakes if you've checked that out the water there crystal clear well child's lake is almost as clear it's not quite that same blue tinge the lake itself is fed by springs so that keeps it nice and clear you don't have a river running in here bringing in a lot of silt now we're flying back along that main beach. See how big the swimming area is? You can go quite a long ways here and still be touching the bottom. So it's easy for kids to learn swimming here and uh, you know practice. Of course, a life jacket's always a good idea, right? If they don't know how to swim very well and mom and dad need to watch a little bit. But you can see the folks out there swimming on the morning that we're filming here. They're doing really well. Look at all that sand. It goes out for well, a long, long ways, doesn't it? The campground we're seeing in the background here is this seasonal campground. So this is where you would stay if you were staying at Child's Lake for the entire year, the seasonal lots. Now they're kind of close together. The actual overnight camping, well the spots are a little further apart, at least it feels like they are. I don't have a lot of pictures of it because when we were here flying it didn't work out so well. The day we were going to film that, well we'll show you later on why we didn't. There were some airplanes in the area, but you have to make do with this one and know it looks much the same. Look at this. Imagine going kayaking on a lake like this. Now we're closer to autumn here. The lake is smooth at night and the kayakers on their way across. Actually makes me want to go kayaking. And I don't even like kayaking, but when you see that, isn't it beautiful? 
That's part of why you should come to the Duck Mountain Park, and of course, especially to Child's Lake. Lots of cabins here too. Now, some friends of mine have a cabin here. We'll fly by it here in a moment. And yeah, beautiful cabins. Lots of people spend their time up here. Even in the wintertime, you'll find people at Child's Lake. They do a little bit of ice fishing up here as well, so that's an option for you if you're into ice fishing. Not quite the same as the really far south Manitoba ice fishing where you drive on, but it works. So this is the scene. We've got the young man fishing and he's working on these fish. Of course, there's a lot of them here. Well, you might figure out what these fish are interested in is not a hook. They're interested in Mrs. Fish. Yeah, it's spawning season when we're filming this, but check it out. That's what I wanted to show you so much about this lake. I have been here in the spring and been out boating, trying to catch a fish and failed miserably. I could see them on the bottom. It's so clear. You can see 10 or 12 feet down. There he goes again. See his hook pulling through there, trying to convince those fish they should eat it. Well, a hook is the last thing on their mind, isn't it? But he is relentless. He's going to keep going. So we'll keep showing you some fish and he'll keep fishing. It was so cool to see this. There are actually some people in the campground watching this with me on the drone to see what they were doing. And there's just so many fish. We couldn't count them all. Well more than 100 fish. Now they've built some sort of artificial or spawning areas here out of the gravel. So that's kind of cool. Check this out. See them all together there? Well, you know there's a lady fish in the middle, right? I don't know enough about fish to pick them up, but oh, look what happened. He just snagged one as it was going by. He was hoping he was going to eat it, but it actually has its fin a little bit. You see the fish is trying to get away there. It's working, working. Isn't it amazing? Oh, and it did get away too. Well, goodbye, fish. Here he is, still fishing. Yeah. Will he win? That's the ultimate question, right? He wants one of those fish so bad. We were here for hours. I had lots of time to film, but fishing, fishing, fishing. Look at that. He's got one again. Now, it didn't exactly bite the hook either, but as the hook was going by, it snagged the fish. And this one, well, it seems to be hooked pretty good because it's not getting away. Look at how hard it is to get the fish in. That's kind of wow, amazing to me because they're so slippery little things, but in the water, they are so strong and can swim so incredibly well. That rod bending, well, huge bend in it there, trying to get the fish. Now, I know he was worried he was gonna lose it again because he lost that first one. Let's see if we can take a peek. Oh, there it is. If you look really close, there's the fish. Now, see how the hook isn't in its mouth? It didn't bite it because it was way too distracted to be hungry, but it did accidentally snag the fish as it was going by. Well, there's really only way, one way to get that out of the fish now, and that's to bring the fish in and remove the hook and then of course release the fish back into the wild so it can go back to uh, you know snuggle time with the other fishes i suppose that's the way of looking at it what we didn't have was a net and we didn't bring one because i said there's no way you're going to catch one of those fish they're not interested in a hook two hours later he proved me wrong pretty good so we'll watch the fish come in here because he does actually get it that's the cool part i never thought he would but the fish does come in gets on shore we took the hook out and then we put it back so so cool. Now, Child's Lake has lake trout in it, obviously. It's also got a lot of jackfish in it. It's got uh, maybe some other stuff too. Child's Lake actually holds a record. Would you believe that? It was 1981 when someone caught a kokanee here. It was 21 and a half inches. Now they don't stock kokanee anymore, but it still holds the record for the longest fish of that type caught in Manitoba. <laughs> lake trout, splake, northern pike, and walleye can be caught here. The clear lake is deep. Lots of scuba divers come here too when they get a chance. Here comes that fish coming into the shore. I am so proud he actually got that. Even prouder that we put it back. Now here's why we didn't film part of the campground and we didn't get a really good picture of this either because we didn't do it with a drone because, well, there was an airplane where we shouldn't fly when there is one. But this is actually a water bobber coming in. They're doing practice today. So we tried to get some pictures of this. I know it's a little grainy because I was shooting just with a cell phone. I wasn't really prepared for it. But it comes in, skims along the water. You'll see the water flying up here as it loads up. There it goes. Loads the plane full of water, takes off, and they actually came back for a run and dropped the water back on the lake, just doing some practicing. There's a lot of forest fires in 2021, so practice was a good thing, although unfortunately the crew's got a lot of work out on real fires too. There's a lot more to Child's Lake than just the lake and the beach and the camping. There's also some amazing hiking trails. Now I suppose you can ski on these too if you come in winter. I generally only come here in summer but it's a beautiful trail. In fact, there's quite a few trails. This is just one of them. There's lots of pathways in between the campgrounds too. Some neat walks there all the way to the main beach. So much to see when you come to Child's Lake. If you come for the weekend, you'll be busy the entire weekend. Now we're just going further down that same walking path here. I'm gonna take you to one of my favorite spots at Child's Lake. Along the way though, we're gonna check out the view of the lake. Now there are some bears here. 
so you certainly want to be bear safe. But if you take your normal bear precautions, there's really nothing wrong with going for a walk here and seeing some views like this from along. Like some people fish from these trails too. You can certainly get out here. Some places here, there's some weeds, but there's spots where there's no weeds. You can fish from the shore if you don't bring a boat with you. When you go a little bit further down this path though, that's where you get to what, well, I don't know. I guess I'm biased. I think it's the best spot. I camp here quite a lot. We come here probably four or five times a year because it's pretty close to where I'm from. So it's not that hard to get to for us to bring the camper up and have a weekend or maybe even a week if we can get away that long. Here it is. See the bridge? Isn't that so cool? It's right on the walking trail. You get to go across this bridge. Water goes under it. There's sort of a wee little bit of the lake on the one side. And then of course the main lake goes by too. Well, call me a little sentimental, but we're actually filming on the last day of the campground being open. It's closing for the year. It's September now. We started out all the way in May when we were filming here and we're all the way through to September as we've gone piece by piece. And well, there's a little party going on. It's what you hear playing here is these folks playing music. Now, I wasn't brave enough to go sit down there with them. I'm sure they would have had me and invited me over, but I kind of just walked by and lurked a little bit. But it was so cool on the last day to have the trees all changing color and then have a big party like that going on too when they were having so much fun. Well, you can hear all the fun they're having, right? Because it's just, I don't know. It was such magic to have it looking so nice. And so I just kind of stood around for a little bit, looking up at the trees, listening to the music and thinking, this is probably as close to paradise as you really get, don't you think? If you're camping at Child's Lake, Roblin, probably the closest big community for you. It's not too terribly far to Dauphin either, but Roblin would certainly be the closest. Grocery stores and everything you need there to get some supplies for camping. Well, we're just kind of hanging around here on the last day now, thinking about how nice of a summer it's been. I do encourage you, if you get a chance, to come up this way. The entire Duck Mountain Park is nice like this. Child's Lake, of course, is my favorite, but... The lake is pretty cool too. There's some pretty friendly people over that way. So we're just out here looking at the lake and, well, looking at the children doing a little fishing. Now we saw earlier on he caught that fish, right? We've moved forward here a couple days. Unfortunately, he's not going to catch a fish today, but that does not stop him from trying. This is something we do hour after hour after hour. We bring the boat up sometimes too and go boating. We have a lot better luck on the boat, but we do sometimes catch them off the edge of the dock here. We're in the overnight camping area here. So this is the dock for that boat launch. There's two boat launches, one at the main beach, one over here, way far across. You can kind of see where the main beach is sitting, but here at least we're on the campground side of it. It's just beautiful though, absolutely beautiful. A little bit of waves going on tonight. We saw it that other night when it was so incredibly smooth when we were watching those fish. That, by the way, right there, that picnic table is one of the best places to get cell phone service in Child's Lake. There isn't a lot of cell phone service here, but if you stand on that picnic table, usually you can get the cell phone to actually work, which is kind of cool. See how we went all the way around because someone's being a little shy? Well, there he is. He's fishing and trying to see what he can catch this time. I thought maybe every night those fish would come spawn like that. Nope. It was just a one night thing when we happened to be there and happened to catch them. Look at how clear that water is amazing isn't it it's so clear you go to a lot of lakes and i'm thinking like maybe down in the winnipeg river system where it's not clear like this at all but here at child's lake crystal clear do you think he got looking younger well that's actually a, a different one of my kids fishing too because if it's not one then it's the other fish 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 and see what we can catch right if you're really into kid trivia, you can't tell the pictures of the two of them apart either. If you take the pictures at the same age, well, unless you see what the background is, you don't know which one is actually in the photo. Well, here's that second beach we talked about earlier on. This is the one in the overnight camping area. So a smaller beach, but it's still kind of cool. The playground isn't right with the beach. It's a little bit off, but there's a playground here too. And again, this is autumn, so we see the leaves changing. I wanted to show you these before we go. They have yurts at Child's Lake. They don't have these at every lake, but they do have them here so if you don't have a camper or a tent you can actually book one of these by the night they book up quick though you pretty much have to book them on opening day for reservations in march or april but they're really cool it's like a permanent kind of tent we're gonna go right inside here then you can see exactly what the thing is like and see if it's something that would work for your family it's really a great way if you well, don't have the camper but even if you haven't tried camping before and you book one of these it gives you a chance to see what it's like and then you find out do you want to spend money on getting your own camper or getting a really fancy tent or something 
Or hey, maybe you just book a yurt once in a while. They do have these at quite a few campgrounds in Manitoba, but certainly not all of them. I think this is the only place in the Duck Mountain that actually has yurts. So I've got that stainless steel table thing going on there outside for preparing food or doing whatever. Then there's this indoor area. Now this is basically just a tarp around, right? It's like a big tent, but with kind of walls to a little bit, table and chairs. They've got a little sofa going on there, bunk beds as well. So it sleeps quite a few people easily. You can have mom and dad here and a couple kids too, and look around a little bit and see what all there is. It's kind of neat. I've never stayed in one, but I do have family that have stayed in one of these and they actually quite like it. They said it was really neat. And you see people come here, there's six of them at Child's Lake. They're pretty much always full. Some lights there at night as well. And then the skylights, you can actually look up at the stars at night. That's kind of cool, isn't it? There's no air conditioning. So in the summertime, well, they'll be a little warm during the day, but you can certainly cool them off at night fairly easily. And if you're here in the shoulder seasons when it's maybe a little cool at night, they've got the heaters in them as well to help you keep warm. Oh, I guess the fiddle music's over. Oh well. So going down the ramp here, these are wheelchair accessible. So if you need that, you can certainly do it. Each one comes with a little camping area too. And then it also has a little fire pit. Did you see that picnic table? Maybe you have to rewind. It's wheelchair accessible. The end is out further so you can actually park a wheelchair under it. That is a very cool thing. You don't see those too often. See that one up on stilts? That's pretty neat too. That's probably the easiest one to get into because it's so high you can get to it from the parking lot and not have to worry about going down and then back up into the yurt. They've got little uh, trailers here, sort of like wagons, I guess you'd call them, that you can put your stuff in to take it to the yurt. There's a parking lot back there. They have modern washrooms here, showers. They have all the normal stuff you'd imagine. When you're staying in the yurts, that's where you'll use for washrooms too. It's only just a couple hundred feet from the front door of your yurt. Now they do have electricity in them. Not a lot of cell phone service here, but you can certainly charge devices or plug in a laptop. Just don't expect to be connecting it to anything. You see a fan there as well, a little heater. And here's one more look at sort of how the outside of it works where you could prepare food in such kind of an outdoor kitchen. At night, obviously the food needs to go into a cooler or something so you're not attracting bears to the area. Well, the young man still seems to be trying to figure out how to catch a fish and this is a wonderful problem to ponder, isn't it? Which fish hook should he try next in hopes of catching that fish? Well, unfortunately, with the season being done here at Child's Lake, he may have to go ice fishing to catch the next one. That does it for our tour of Child's Lake in the beautiful Duck Mountain Provincial Park of Manitoba. Hey, I'm so glad you stopped by and took a look at it all. I hope you enjoyed those fish. To me, that's the best part of the video, is seeing those fish doing their thing. It's so cool to see that and so many places you wouldn't be able to see it because the water's not clear enough or your timing wouldn't be there. So wow, that is truly the best. If you get a chance, why not tell a friend about that part of the video because they could certainly come watch it. Speaking of watching videos, why don't you hit the subscribe button? Subscribing helps us out. Plus it also makes sure you know every time we put out a brand new video so you can see where we are traveling next. While you're at it, hit the like button too. That'll help us out in the search results and help more people discover this amazing part of Manitoba. Well, that does it for our tour. I hope you've enjoyed it like we've enjoyed showing it to you. Farewell for now from Child's Lake in the beautiful Duck Mountain Provincial Park in Manitoba, Canada. We'll see you next time.